I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us tonight. Uh, this guest that I have this evening has such an interesting story, and you may recognize her. She participated in the Lifting the Veil of Polygamy DVD that came out uh, back in 2007 or so, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Around so that it's time. been seven or so years, and th I know that that, that DVD, uh, there have been thousands given out, and uh, I hope you'll go on YouTube and, and check that out, Lifting the Veil of Polygamy. So, Kathy, thanks for coming and sharing My pleasure. <laughs> an interesting story. You were born in the church, were you? I was. Uh, I was. Born in the covenant, as they say? No, oh. no. Um, my mom and dad weren't sealed until after my dad passed away. Oh. And then mom went to the t temple. Mom was pretty faithful. She yeah. was very ill, but yeah. she was pretty faithful, but dad was not. And the, and your ki the kids, the si brothers and uh, sisters? and No, mostly just my sister and myself. Went to church and were mm -hmm. active? And, and I, I used to go to church. We had to walk about three, maybe four blocks. Yeah. And, and I started walking there myself when I was about six or seven years old because mom couldn't go a lot of times because oh, she was ill. And, but dad would offer to read us the funnies if <laughs> if we would stay home from church. And uh, I always felt like I needed to be there. I always had a deep fear that I couldn't get back to God. That was, we had a lot of abuse in our home. Oh. And I just had a really deep fear so I couldn't get back to him. So made you feel unworthy or mm -hmm. any kind of? I felt like I just, I just couldn't get back there. Yeah. Like I wasn't good enough. So you were trying hard to be a good girl <laughs> at church and stuff. Always and, and yeah. always had to be there. Yeah. yeah. And so. uh, you kind of grow up. Or did you take seminary and were you I in took the seminary. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And uh, I I really liked seminary. Had a, a deep deep love for for Joseph Smith. Yeah. You know, just um, deep and abiding. <laughs> I'll tell you, I thought he was everything. <laughs> yeah, read the Book of Mormon and did mm -hmm. all that stuff. Now something interesting happens at fifteen that I think the audience would find surprising. What happens? <laughs> At 15, I got married in the temple. I married a bishop's son. Yeah, was and, this the uh, Salt Lake Temple? Uh-huh. Yeah. Got married there, and they figured because I was marrying a bishop's son that it would be peachy keen. <laughs> that's so... <laughs> and it wasn't. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that was so young. I Very mean, young. So you got Very special young. permission. Did you have to mm -hmm. meet with anybody? or? No. no? Uh, the bishop handled it through yeah. the state president and through the, the first presidency. They wrote letters and... And communicated got and got and permission. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that uh, was successful then? The, <laughs> the marriage wasn't? No. We, oh. were, we were married five years. Oh. And um, it's interesting because when I came home and he was home from work and he to I had gone and filed for divorce and he told me, he said, you can't leave me. We're married in the temple. I can do anything to you that I want. You can't leave me. That's kind of the attitude. My some sister have, was isn't with it? me, and and I said, "Well, watch me." And he said, "I will make you pay. I will break oh. you." And oh. he did try. <laughs> oh shoot! So it was it was <laughs> an ugly divorce, but yeah. I couldn't stay there anymore. When did you remain active in the church? I did pretty much. Yeah. Um, 
off and on. Now, I know you were active in the choirs and singing, did a lot of singing. Always. My sister and I, uh, actually my whole family sang. Yeah. And um, Jerry and I sang maybe three to four funerals a week all over the state. Oh my goodness. And we did weddings and we did Easter programs and we did, you know, MIA programs. Of course, that's what it was called yeah. back then. Young yeah. Women's was and Mutual. Mutual. Yeah. And um, we were always singing Christmas programs. We sang at the uh, Valley Music Hall when the church owned it. Oh, in Our whole family. Yeah. Uh -huh. We entertained Put on everywhere. programs. Mm -hmm. Sang in sacrament goodness. meeting. We were always off to s a sacrament meeting to sing. And I was chorister um, for primary three wow. different times. I was sacrament meeting chorister, hmm. Relief Society chorister, choirs did all their solo work was really and it was awesome. no, no question the church was true right <laughs> that's was there any right question? <laughs> no <laughs> joseph smith was a prophet and oh so. i believed he was a prophet yeah. and i um i just studied a lot yeah. and but you know what i always had questions about the book of mormon things that i shelved yeah. that i didn't want to look at you know because of this driving fear that I couldn't get back to God, and I had to do everything that Joseph Smith said that we had to do. So, yeah. and what did you think about Jesus at this as a Latter Day Saint? Well, I knew that I loved him, but not like I do now, knowing <laughs> that he's not my brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you you were kind of fearful that he may not love you. Is yes. that kind of what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Is that you didn't think God? Uh, I just didn't Jesus. think that I was good enough to get get back to him. I've never had a real good self-image, you know, with all the abuse. There was yeah. not just physical abuse. Um, there was sexual abuse in our family. There was just a lot of ugly Emotional things. Emotional abuse, probably. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Very much so, yeah. So life goes on, and you, uh, you're you active in the church, and you finally marry a gentleman, and what does he want you to do? Uh, he wants me to live polygamy. <laughs> In fact, he found a group for us to go into, and was this um, shocking to you? Um. You know, n not really. My ancestors were polygamous. Martin H. Peck. He's in church history. Oh. He had nine wives and over fifty children. Um, and my it's in section one thirty-two, of course. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandmother, uh, Anne Catherine Peterson, came from England. She nursed my grandfather he was four years old. She joined the church in England and mm -hmm. her husband, uh, my grand great grandfather, told her she had nine children and he said, if you won't leave that Mormon church, he said, uh, my grandfather was the baby, when you finish nursing this baby, you'll have to leave. So she nursed him till he was four years old. <laughs> and then uh, her and my aunt, great aunt Lavinia, yeah. she was 18 at the time, they had passage paid to come to Utah that they had arranged for Mads Jorgensen, and they were both to marry him when they got here if he paid their passage. So wow. they left, and my great grandfather ran his horses to death trying to stop her. <laughs> so that's how we got to America. <laughs> so it wasn't terribly surprising, maybe, for you to to believe in no, polygamy. No, had always did talked you about it polygamy. Then? Well, uh, I did. I felt like I had to do what Joseph Smith said, and not just just what the church was doing, but I had to live all of it. And he convinced me, uh, you know, my husband convinced me a he, lot of did that. Did he say that this is what Joseph Smith believed and taught, mm -hmm. we have to well, follow him? he was going to do it whether I came with him or not. Oh my goodness. He was, he was going to, and I had, I had a real fear about that. I loved him. Yeah. I didn't want to go through divorce again, no. and so I followed him into that horrible place. And was that here in Salt Lake? <laughs> it was in Modena, just um, by Enterprise. Oh, yeah. You have Cedar City, St. George, and then you have Modena, okay. or Enterprise out here. And so we were out there. They and have a pyramid temple out there. And that's there. where you lived the polygamy. Mm -hmm. And how long were you in, in that? I went in there in uh, 19, the end of 1985, beginning of 1986, and I was there, and, and I left in uh, 1998. So I was oh there about goodness. 13 years. Wow. 12 and a half to 13 years. Well, you have such an interesting perspective then. So what did you experience in? Oh, well, I sucked everything in like a sponge, read everything I could get my hands on 
for the first six or seven years in there, and then I was the rest of the time trying to get out because I could see uh, it was awful. It's, it's awful. Um, in fact, we were in a meeting in this little temple, all the members, and um, one lady asked a question, and one sister, and she said, well, aren't we women supposed to be counselors to their husband? And their so-called prophet said, you're counseling to your husband if he wants your counsel. If not, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> we, were, we were told we were second-class citizens, that children were second-class citizens. Yeah. I challenged them in church once and said, well, if you're always, we're just talking about your godhood, what about our goddesshood? And yeah. uh, I didn't get called on much after that. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> they were all sitting around talking about plural marriage, the men, one yeah. Sunday, and I was there. I was the only female there. And I kept putting in my two cents worth. You know, I thought that was fine. Uh, and finally, the apostle said to, to my husband, he said, is there anything you could do to get her to shut up? Oh my and God. he just said, you know, and I, that's the way they failed. If you're in polygamy, you don't talk. <laughs> you're just a second class citizen. Uh -huh. Did you feel like you were pleasing God or were God was pleased with you at this point? Uh, well, no, not really. Mm -hmm. I really didn't. I always had a fear yeah. still because there's so many things you're supposed to be doing. Your genealogy, your temple work. We had to make our own garments, and we wore the ones clear down to the ankle, oh. the collar up to here, the three mm. ties clear down to here. And I had to make those. And uh, for me, for my husband, um, and you just had all those things you were expected to do. Good works, um, it, it's a mess. I know in the Lifting the Veil of Polygamy, you explain how you, what you experienced the first time you went down there to... Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I think yeah, when they took me out thought, to oh to Pequin, the city of God, <laughs> yeah, <this laughs> and I was standing in these streets with ruts in them, and I'm looking around, and I just said, I said, Father in heaven, I said, if this is the city of God, I said, the only ones that are going to go to the celestial kingdom from here are the mice. This couldn't possibly be, couldn't possibly be what you would. There was just trailers thrown everywhere. I mean. Yeah. And did they, were they very forceful in teaching that they were the only true church? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, th there was no snow question. No, that it's, you had the moved from the it's the one righteous true church. branch. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The righteous branch of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, Christ's Church. That was that the name of the church. That was the name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so they just called themselves the branch. So, so what finally Sorry. happens to uh, make a change in your life here again? Um, well, we took, we took a sister wife. I gave her to my husband, and um, there was a lot of abuse there. Um, Knockdown drag outs. Mm. They had what they call file leadership, and uh, I told my husband, I said, you are more married to your file leader than you are to me. That's your marriage. I'm just here to cook and clean. Um, I couldn't go along with the laws and things that they said that Joseph Smith taught that were deeper than what the Mormons live. And um, then they wanted to give him an 18-year-old. Mm -hmm. And she didn't want him, and I knew it. And oh, he was old enough to be her grandfather. And I said, I called and I talked to the f first counselor and I said, I won't accept her. And they said, well, we're just being courteous with you. <laughs> Sorry Actually, we that. can do what we want. Despite what Section uh -huh. 132 mm -hmm, says. Uh. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, it looks like you've got him wrapped around your little finger. And he s they said, yes, we do. And we're keeping him. And I said, and you can have him. And you left. And I you. left, yeah. And you re actually rejoined the church. I came did. Came back to the LDS church. I did. I, I went through Brother Worthland. And Is that um, Joseph uh, Worthland? Mm -hmm, yeah. Joseph you B. met Worthland. with him a couple of times, I guess. I did, and and it was amazing to me. And and I questioned at the time, because he didn't seem to know what I was there for either time. His secretary ran everything. She had to come and tell him in his ear. He'd look at her and say, "What what is she here for?" And she'd come whispering in his ear and tell him. Really? And, uh, uh huh. I felt really bad for him. 
He didn't really have any specific questions then, or was it checking <laughs> your worthiness or your willingness to he obey He just asked me how I felt about the church, and give up I, did I still believe it was true? And yeah. I said, yes. And he said, do you still want to affiliate with the polygamist? And I said, no way. Yeah. And he said, why don't we just restore your blessings? Okay. And so do you, so were you rebaptized then? And? I was, but you know, I was thinking last night, why would they have to rebaptize me if my blessings had been restored? Well, it's interesting because you were been excommunicated, I guess, because mm -hmm. because of been apostasy. Polygamy. Uh -huh. yeah. So why no, why no, would they rebaptize me if my blessings well, maybe, had been maybe restored? Maybe the restoration came after your baptism. I don't <laughs> know how that works. I but. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could so, be an so again, no question that Joseph Smith's a prophet, and the Book of Mormon's true. You're still hanging on to those uh, things. You know, right? a lot of the reason I went back into the church was um, for my children. Was it? They wanted me there, and I felt like it was the best thing to do, but I wasn't there long before I just couldn't take it anymore. What kind of happened? Well, I, I went to one particular meeting, and there was a lot of um, guilting, shaming from the pulpit, and you shoulda, woulda, coulda, you have to do this, and you need to do more of this. And that next just, Monday... Just felt like, you'd, again, you're not doing mm -hmm. enough. And that next Monday, I was driving up, I had to go into St. George, and I was driving up the back way around Dixie Rock. Yeah. And I was sobbing in my car and praying to the Lord. Just, I was sobbing. I said, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to get back to you. I can't, I can't do enough. I can't do enough good works. I can't get to the temple enough. I can't get all my genealogy. I just, I can't work. I can't do all of these things. And I said, I'm not going to make it. And I am just sobbing to him. And it just comes over me. And I said, I said, you know what, God? I said, either, either Jesus died for all of my sins I ever would commit or all of my sins I ever have committed. And I said, or he didn't. And I said, and I believe in Jesus Christ. And I said, I'm done. Wow. I am done. And I'm sorry. I turned my car around. I came back home. I took my garments off. And I said, I'm done. And I knelt down and prayed and told him, that I would trust him with my life, wow. that he could do with me whatever he wanted to do. I'm sorry. No, you're great. It was very touching for me. Um, and I thought I'll either make it back to your will, but I'm going to lean on Jesus Christ. And that's where it's been ever since. But I didn't know where to go. And I had a lot of fighting, you know, with especially my daughter. She called me one day and she says, Mom, if you're not going to be in the church and you don't get into the celestial kingdom, what are we going to do? And I said, you know what, sweetheart, you'll always know it was your three mother, and if you're there, you come down and visit me. You'll have that privilege. <laughs> you know, she never said anything else, but... You just trusted, just turned your life to Jesus. Completely. Had you been reading the Bible, or had someone you told know, you to I do that? You know, I never gave the Bible much credibility. We don't, do we? As, uh -uh, as I just figured, well, Even how do I know? Especially, I'm well, sure. yeah, it yeah. could have been translated incorrectly, and sure. I wouldn't be reading the truth, so... Uh, but you know, then I started, I started to read at least the New Testament, and um, I met Doris and and Jinx and Scott and some of the others, and I did the Veil of Polygamy, and uh, you know, I just, I'm sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, and uh, so I didn't know where to go. I went to Calvary Church. It was a shock to me to see a band on stage. I, I will admit that. <laughs> And so I didn't continue to go there. Thanks. Thank you, honey. I didn't continue to go there. Um, I went to a Lutheran church. Uh, they came out in robes, and I <laughs> didn't, a little shocking. I didn't care it? for that, and yeah. I just was had been searching. I've just kind of searched all along, and I started going to uh, another little Christian church, which I really liked, until they gave me a tithing receipt that was much like the one in the Mormon church. And I had studied enough by then and with books I'd been reading and starting to think outside the box to know that you, we can't live under the law of Moses and live under grace. And I knew that tithing was a law to be of one Moses. Or the other uh -huh. yeah. And so when they gave me this receipt, I thought, well, I don't want to go here either. So then one night I was scanning on the on my computer and and I uh, was on YouTube and I saw Heart of the Matter yeah. and uh, it happened to be live. 
I don't know exactly how I got to it, but there I am, and the number's on the screen. I thought, I'm going to call. So oh, you called I called and talked to Sean, and yeah. uh, he said, you know, there isn't anything you need to do except love your Savior and learn your Bible. And he said, but you could. I said, well, where can I go? And he said, you can come to campus. Yeah. So I went that following Sunday, and I can hardly wait from Sunday to Sunday to get there because we're just studying it verse by verse, yeah. and I need to know the Bible. And he's amazing. I'm so, <laughs> so fascinated with your turning your life to Christ, just being basically broken, I would guess. You, you know you haven't pleased God. You know you can't oh, I'm follow a this. Or, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yet you, that would be your impulse to say, okay, God, I, I basically I turn it over to you. I'm done. You I, have to I, ha my I life. do that on a daily basis because yeah. I think we have a tendency to pull back what we release, you know, yeah. in maybe a little fear. And I just, I just have to turn it over to Him. I've turned my children over to Him. I've, I've turned my life over to Him. My eyes are really bad. And, you know, um, I said, if you want my eyesight, you can have it. <laughs> Whatever you want, you can have it. You know, mm -hmm. if you want my life, you can have it. You can, you can have everything yeah. that I have if I can just witness of you and let people know how wonderful He is and that He's not our brother. He's our God. Yeah. So what did grace mean to you? To come under His grace, yeah. under the, because of His shed blood on yeah. the cross, and I love the cross now. Yeah, <laughs> my chain broke. Right, I have it on now, but we, we don't do that as Mormons. The polygamists, no, I guess, don't have any regard for the cross either. They or? really don't. They really yeah. don't. They never talk about uh, Jesus much. It's mostly about the prophets and Joseph Smith and. The only true church. I could never sing praise to the man again or <laughs> follow the prophet or we um, thank the old God for a prophet. Um, so you can't can't wait to get to church on Sunday. The Bible obviously <laughs> means so much different now, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. It's coming alive for me and it's it's so beautiful. We it never, is just so and beautiful. I never trusted it before. Did I we? didn't. Yeah. And you know, I thinking that Christ was my brother kind of made me feel like I was equal with him, if you Isn't can imagine. I, I know, equal with God. <laughs> it made him it, small, yeah. you know, and he's so large. <laughs> yeah, he just happened to be first in line, kind of, you know, the first yeah. born up there in heaven. Uh -huh. That's what we thought, and and he just happened to be well, born e first. Well, even the thought that, that God was once a man yeah. makes him very small. Yeah. And I can't I can't even abide that kind of thinking anymore. I, know, I really it's so can't. wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I mean God is, is so awesome and so um well you tremendous. know Earl there's just um there's such a great peace in my heart. Even if I see my kids doing things that, that I don't think will be for their benefit. Yeah. There's a peace. There's a peace because I know that they're gonna be all right yeah. with with Christ. Someday, somewhere, sometime, even if they don't believe now, they're going to get that purging. They're going to, because he says, you know, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is the Christ. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I mm -hmm. don't worry. I just release them to my Savior. Well, and I've had to be patient with some of my family. It sounds like yeah. you do too. <laughs> you now, do. Have you, had, have you had some that have? been willing to listen and share with you or you've been uh, able to not share really with you? no really? isn't that disappointing <laughs> I've got, it is i yeah. have uh, four of my children that are that really don't know if they believe there's a god oh. which i pray for them constantly isn't that, that they the will worst? learn to know their savior yeah. mm -hmm. because the relationships we build are, are with the church aren't they and with they in are. your case and not only the church but then with these polygamists and the prophets and apostles and oh polygamy, yes and you feel like you got to be joined at the hip with your family yeah <laughs> but you know? uh, not really relying and trusting yeah. on god yeah yeah. And so I get I get to talk to them a little bit. I interject here and there where I feel directed by the Spirit, but yeah. and I can't talk to my one daughter and my one son oh. at, at all. They're they're really true blue oh. Mormon, and you know they they tolerate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started out by sharing some info, sharing a thought about God not uh, either loving you or you haven't done enough. Uh, you feel a little differently now. Completely. 
Yeah. I, I know that he loves me. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And I know he loves me. I don't know why, but I know he does. Yeah. And, he <laughs> and I'm so grateful. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Right. right? There, there is no way. We're going to fall short of the glory of God. There isn't any way. And I finally realized that there's nothing that I can do. Yeah. Nothing to get me back or get me not back to, but get to get, God, get to except God. through Jesus Christ, and I'm not going through Joseph Smith <laughs> <laughs> to get there, even if he was pompous enough to think that we had to. <laughs> I, and, and I think he did. So, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, oh, yes. If it wasn't him, the others. So. It's just a, it's an amazing transformation, and I, I just, uh, what would you say to the Latter-day Saints as you think oh, about what they're going through? And, bless and they, their and precious they, hearts. And they're sweet people. I, I don't have much positive regard for the leaders because I think they know yeah. that, that it's phony. Yeah. But the people, they are some of the sweetest people and they're just, they're so duped. And, and I would just say, mm -hmm, a few years ago. think outside of the box. Don't be afraid to read and search. Yeah. You know, not only just your own things, but there are there is so much proof out there and so much um, investigating and digging deep yeah. to find the truth. Don't it's be afraid there. to look. Yeah. Satan's not going to take you over. We have a mind, you know, and yeah. <laughs> if you stay prayerful, God's going to guide you. I mean, he did me. I prayed for a couple of years that I would yeah. know the truth and the truth would make me free, and he did. Were there any scriptures that really kind of stuck with you or kind of made you keep thinking about things? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Is that it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that? And not your elder brother, but God. But God. And well, I love Isaiah, you know, for unto us a child is born, yeah. unto us a son is given. And it tells us right there, you know, that he's the almighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Yeah. He's, he's everything. And it's so glorious so that we don't, we don't appreciate him. Like you said, we almost make him are equal and yeah. that we can become like him and he was once like us yeah. god the father <laughs> how how blasphemous is that i know it's it's so egotistical and yeah. so sad and my heart breaks for the lds people and i love them yeah. they're good souls you know but they're they're they think i'm lost yeah i think they are <laughs> but once but once <laughs> you I accept him then you yeah then you want to serve him yeah. and serve your fellow man and and do things. You want I mean, to do it like for a we different base. Eat, drink, and be merry, or anything. No. We're just doing it for because we love. Well, you him know, I don't. Anything. I don't want to sin because I. I want to be pleasing to my yeah. Savior. I want to do what He wants me to do. But. Yeah. Um, oh, Kathy, there's so much to your story. It's so rich. <laughs> it's and, a lot. <laughs> and coming in and out. What a wonderful perspective. And I hope you'll tune into that uh, or look up li lifting the veil of polygamy and. Uh, and listen to a little more of Kathy's story. Good night.